Hey, this is CMD Channel. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my post fight analysis for UFC 171. Overall, this was a great card uh, so far. Definitely one of the cards of the year. Um, just top to bottom, I mean, all the fights are pretty good. I, I gotta say. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any, like, true state. I mean, the, the worst would be, like, Lombard Shields or something like that. Um, but even then, like, the cool throws and the punches were, were kind of not, you know, were, were pretty fun to watch. Uh, man, that the Fox Sports 1, or Fox Sports 2, excuse me, uh, prelims, man, those are really good. Like, three of the four fights went to decision, but they're all, like, really good back and forth fights. Well, except for Bermuda's, which had this, wasn't really back and forth. Um, and even the Fight Pass fights were pretty good, too. Um... As far as the bonuses go, Hendricks and Lawler got fight of the night. Uh, Ovince St. Preux and Bermudez got performance of the night honors. Might as well just be St. Preux got submission of the night. Bermudez got knockout of the night. I mean, that's the, that's the best way to look at it. The picks were pretty good. I got 9 out of 12. I missed Whiteford versus uh, Pineda, Gaslam versus Story, and Woodley versus Condit. Uh, a couple things to note, uh, prospects, man, uh, Scoggins, Gaslam, Strickland, Garcia, Jury, all getting the wins, um, over exper very experienced competition, too, well, except for, like, Garcia and Spencer are both, uh, still prospects in their own right, um, but, yeah, you know, one thing you, that, that's really noticeable about these prospects, too, um, athleticism you, you can just kind of see that they're like much better athletes um, that are prospects these days really good wrestlers you know I mean Scoggins offensive wrestling Gaslam's offensive wrestling wasn't too bad Strickland man that guy really good wrestling there Garcia winning you know kind of sloppy in the stand up but still connecting he used the wrestling Jury, Diego, come forward, take him down. Um, so you know a, a lot of good wrestling there. Um, among just overall athleticism with the prospects. Um, you know, I gotta say after this event, you know, there's a lot of welterweight fights here and, and some notable ones, but there isn't like a definitive welterweight title contender. Um. Woodley's probably kind of a front runner at this point, but you know, it, uh, Hector Lombard could definitely be in that spot, and, and Roy McDonald coming off that big win over Damian Maya, you know. And then you got guys like Matt Brown, that's around uh, the winner of Ellenberger versus Safadine. I mean, the division is wide open now. Um, curious scorecards here, you know. Um, some head scratchers. 29-28 for Lombard. You know, one guy, a guillotine, more or less, gave Jake Shields the round. I mean, there wasn't a lot of activity, but come on. I mean, it's just guillotine. 30-27 um, Gaslam. You know, I would at least give Rick Story the second round. Um... At the very least, just for the for the knockdown. I mean, Gaslam was doing really well, but it's not like Story was just not hitting him back or anything either. Uh, I'd at least give Story that second round. Doug Crosby in the Lawler versus Hendricks fight, round two, ten eight Hendricks, round five, ten ten. I mean, it's just kind of odd. Um, so very odd scorecards for the night. Uh, let's get started though. Johnny Hendricks is now the new UFC welterweight uh, champion as he beat Robbie Lawler by unanimous decision. All scorecards, 48-47. I feel that Hendricks got rounds 1, 2, and 5, whereas Lawler got rounds 3 and 4. Um, one thing about uh, Hendricks is his combination punching was really on point. He'd go like, Punch, punt, you know, throw a combination, throw a light kick, continue striking. Um, 
great fight too I mean definitely one of the fights of the year so far I, I would argue that Pat Curran versus Daniel Strauss is also up there as well which happened the night before um really good stuff I would actually argue that Curran Strauss is more technical than this fight um but this fight definitely had so much on the line, such a good backstory, especially with GSP leaving the division, Robbie Lawler once being a guy that like wouldn't you know finally fulfilled his potential, Johnny Hendricks finally getting that redemption and that title, great stories and, and the fight itself. I mean, so back and forth. I, I, there are times when I thought Johnny Hendricks would get knocked out. Crazy to think that no one in this fight got knocked down. Though. I mean, they got wobbled, but stayed standing, but they, they, um, they didn't get knocked down. Um, yeah, from a technical level, it, it was good. Um, they were standing in front of each other a lot of times and just kind of throwing. Lawler would, like, take hits. I mean, it's something Lawler does sometimes. He'll take hits and just kind of smile <laughs> like he's crazy. Um... Still really good stuff. Lots of combination striking. Robbie Lawler doing really well, especially early, defending takedowns. I think he did get taken on once and just got, got back to his feet really well. Um, so great stuff there. Um, you know, as far as who Hendricks gets next, the three front runners would be Woodley, Lombard, and McDonald. I think Woodley's probably got one of the better cases just because he at least did get a finish. Um, against Condit, who's like the number two guy. Um, but you know, that one's got a case, uh, really, for the next title shot. Unless GSP comes back. I know Nick Diaz is even, you know, trying to get his name out there, trying, you know, trying to get a fight with Hendrix. Um, I think Robbie Lawler should probably fight like the loser of Tarek Safadine versus Jake Ellenberger. I will say this. And I think this fight really kind of shows it. I just cannot see Johnny Hendricks as a dominant champion. I mean, it just... Like I said, he's, defensively, he still has a lot of flaws. Um, and stand-up. Got a hell of a chin. Um, you know, I mean, there's some people I think Robbie Lauder should have actually got the win. I mean, it's a small vocal minority. I don't agree with that. I thought it was 48-47 pretty clearly, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but, like, it just kind of shows that, you know, it, uh, like, for example, if Condit fights uh, Hendrix, he's probably not going to fight for a while because he's uh, got the knee thing. You know, Condit's got to lose, like, a round, like, the first round. He, he's kind of a slow star starter. Once rounds like three, four, and five come, I mean, he, he could potentially beat Johnny Hendricks. When they fought, I, I you know, he was getting the better of the third round. Um, even got like Tyron Woodley versus Hendricks. I mean, you know, just really good right hand, strong wrestler, you know. I mean, he can win it. Roy McDonald, you know, I mean, he can fight that conservative game plan. Um,. It's got to get sprawl, you know. Um, interesting matchup against Hendricks. Um, Lombard, I mean, besides his gas tank, I mean, that guy's judo, that guy's counter striking. And, and he's short, you know, Johnny Hendricks is, is actually relatively short for the division. So is Lombard, you know. So it wouldn't be Lombard reaching to, to punch his face or anything like that. So, you know, I. I would probably favor Johnny Hendricks to beat a lot of these guys. I probably... But I think one of these guys can beat him. Like, you know, even a guy like Tarek Safadine, to be perfectly honest with you. Tarek Safadine, really good takedown defense. Very technical striking. I mean, it's not that... I mean, I, I once again, I'd favor Hendricks. But I don't think it's that inconceivable to think Terry Safdie might be able to outpoint Johnny Hendricks. I mean, leg kicks galore with him, block his block his punches, hit some leg kicks, defend takedowns. I mean, you know, even Terry Safdie 
could potentially beat Hendricks. Allen Berger wouldn't be the worst matchup against Hendricks either. Strong wrestler, heavy puncher. I mean, that's the thing. It, it definitely is wide open right now in the welterweight division. I, I don't think they'll have a dominant champion. This fight is a great fight, but it also kind of showed me that, like, you know, these guys aren't going to be GSP in his prime. It, or, or like Matt Hughes, where you're just dominating opposition. Uh, I can see Hendricks versus any one of these guys will probably be pretty close. I, I have a hard time seeing a lot of these fights being one-sided. Take also in consideration, a lot of people thought he lost to Mike Pierce. A lot of people thought he lost to Josh Koshyak. Those are split decision victories, um, and they were legitimately very close. He is a much better fighter since then, but nonetheless, he's not prone... He will get the crazy one-punch knockouts, but when he doesn't um, it, and still gets a win, I, I've noticed like the, the Condit fight, you know, um, they tend to be relatively close fights uh, with Hendricks. So, um, yeah, great fight though, nonetheless. Next fight after that, Tyron Woodley uh, beat Carlos Condit by injury in the second round. Gotta say that uh, Willie looked really good early on. That guy's overhand right is is really quick. He throws that one. Uh, it's definitely his best punch, and he hits it really well. Covers distance really well. He was really tagging Condit, especially with that right hand, uh, pretty early on. Got takedowns on Condit. Clearly got the first round. Excuse me. Uh, the second round, though, um, I noticed that uh, Woodley wasn't as strong as it was in the first. He, he always has gas tank issues. I mean, it wasn't super bad or anything, but it looks like there was something of a momentum shift until the injury. Um, as Woodley was backing up against the cage a lot. And, um, you know, Condit was kind of finding something of a groove. One thing to note, though, even though I said that, Willie can always, always rely on his wrestling, even if Condit gets something of a groove going on. Um, the way the fight was going, it's really tough to say um, how it would go. Woodley was doing really well, though. Um, if Woodley doesn't get the title shot next, I'd like to see him get a title eliminator with Roy McDonald. I know that some people are saying Lombard, but uh, the problem with that is they train together. They're all like AT, like like Lawler, Woodley, and Lombard are all like ATT guys. So I think it just makes sense that Woodley gets like uh, McDonald next, or, or uh, yeah, he already beat Safadine. Um, maybe Allenberger. Allenberger beats Safadine. Do Tyler Woodley, Matt Brown, if you want to go that way too. Um, but yeah, good showing from Woodley, and, and the guy has definitely been showing that he is far from the lane prey artist that he was back in Strike Force, fighting like Paul Daly, Jordan Mean, you know, and, and whatnot. Um, definitely coming into his own. Next fight after that. Miles Jury beat Diego Sanchez by unanimous decision. Curious scorecard here, 29-28. Um, I think it was one of the judges that gave 29-28 Sanchez. It was like the first round, too. I mean, it was just bizarre, you know? It's like, I don't know what you were looking at. Jury just outclassed Sanchez. I mean, someone was saying that, too. It's like, you know, it's kind of fun with the pre-fight build-up. He's so hyped, he's so energetic, you know, and whatnot. Comes out with the yes chance and his walkout. Gets slapped in the face, super hyped. Then when he got, you know, and you kind of get into it, and then the fight happens, and the guy just gets punched in the face a lot. He'll wing punches. Some of them will connect. Otherwise, I mean, you know, it, it's like... What are we trying to watch with the Sanchez? What are we expecting out of a Sanchez fight? We're expecting a fun fight. 
And generally, you get pretty fun fights with Diego Sanchez. But, like, I, it's like you're kind of waiting for, like, maybe he'll come back or something like that at this point. It's like you don't expect him to win anymore. It, it's almost like you're almost expecting him to lose and then hope he comes for some magic comeback in the third like he did against, um, it, it, like, Melendez, you know, with the uppercut. Or, like, he got the third round against Jake Ellenberger. You know what I mean? It's like, you're kind of, it, it, he's just, he's kind of one-dimensional with his approach. He just goes forward in a straight line and throws haymakers. Um, the occasional body kick. Try for the takedown, but, I mean... At this point, I'm just going to say it's just a name at this point. I mean, you know, good movement, good straight punches, mix in some wrestling, and then you beat Diego Sanchez. Young guys like Miles Jury beat Diego Sanchez is like nine times out of ten these days. I mean, it just is what it is. Um, Jury, he looked good. He looked really good, actually. Um... I think my thing with Jerry is he didn't show me anything that I didn't already know. I think that was the problem. I think he should get a step up in competition. He's a very solid striker, good wrestler, moved well, got his back up, uh, back off against a cage. Um, you know, yeah, he showed to be a very solid guy. Maybe because he's not a specialist, but, um, you know, is a good win nonetheless. Needs to step up. I think that he should get the winner of, like, Cerrone versus Barboza, or the winner of Miller versus Green next. Um, it's tough to say where Jury's ceiling is, though. You know, he's not, he's a good striker. He, he can knock a guy out. He can wobble a guy. He, he wobbled Sanchez. Knocked out Ramsey Nijem. He's good on the ground. You know, he's a good wrestler. Um, specialist at any one point? No. Um, kind of like an Evan Dunham type in a sense. Except for having more athletic. You know? That, that's what I, I'd kind of see as a, a Miles Jury. You know, just... Really good at everything, but not a specialist. Um, this isn't the worst thing, and but it's hard to gouge the guy's ceiling because of that. Uh, but Diego Sanchez, I mean, I think he should probably retire, to be honest with you. This guy gets hit in the head a lot. He can't talk correctly <laughs> these days. Um, you know, but... It's if he's gonna stay, I mean you gotta give him give him a fun fight. Give him like a Joe Lozon or something like that. Or give him like some up and coming lightweight prospect. I mean use Sanchez's name to either get a fun fight uh, that's not very divisionally relevant. Gomi worked, you know what I mean? Um yeah, he fought, of course. Um, I thought Gummy should have won that fight. Uh, or else give him, like, one of these up-and-coming guys. Like, uh, you know, if James Krause beats um, Jamie Varner, give him Diego Sanchez. Or Abel Trujillo, you know. Get, give Abel Trujillo. Uh, none of them fight Diego Sanchez and Axe. You know. Honestly, I... After the BJ Penn loss, I mean, th this was a stat that a lot of people were saying he's like 4-3 in the UFC or something like that. A lot of people think he should be 1-6 because they don't think he beat Campman. They don't think he beat uh, Gomi. So, yeah. I love the guy. It's just, he, he, it's starting to show that he, he's getting older, a lot more predictable, and very hittable. <laughs> Um, you kind of know what you're getting from Diego at this point. Okay. Um, geez. Oh, I, I missed, uh, was Jerry. I missed, uh, Hector Lombard, uh, beats 
Jake Shields by unanimous decision. Um, you know, one thing that's really cool with uh, Lombard are his throws, his judo throws, and um, his striking, man. The guy's a really explosive guy, real athletic. It's huge. I mean, the guy's just a ginormous guy. It was like an adult going up against a kid. I mean, which is kind of funny because when you watch a Jake Shields fight, um, you know, he has a way of negating other people's offense really well. Look at the Tywin Woodley fight. I mean, he made Tywin Woodley look bad. The Maya fight. He makes good, great fighters look bad. Hector Lombard made Jake Shields look bad. No one does that, too. I mean, the only guy that's able to really do that was probably Jake Ellenberger. Even GSP didn't necessarily make Jake Shields look bad. Actually, GSP looked pretty bad in victory against Jake Shields. Of course, there's some more fire pokes. Um... But yeah, it should be interesting because Shields is kind of like a Fitch or an Akami. Stylistically, he's not the most aesthetically pleasing guy to watch. Um, he has a way of... His striking's not that great. But people fear to take down, so he actually gets his offense in there a lot. And he's a, he throws in volume. He's got a really good chin. He doesn't have the best takedowns. He's just relentless about getting them. And if he doesn't get them, he'll like go back to the clinch, throw some knees and whatnot, and just kind of outwork guys. Um, once again, and negating the, their offense. The problem is, I think it's like his last fight on his contract. He gets paid a lot. I don't know if the UFC is going to keep Jake Shields. They've cut Okami. They've cut John Fitch, and I gotta say, Jake Shields is kind of in that area. He's older, he's an older fighter, not aesthetically pleasing, and he gets paid a lot. It's not a good look. Uh, and he, now he's coming off a loss, getting pretty dominated by Hector Lombard. Um, so, uh, I don't know, yeah, I, like I said, I don't know if to keep him. And he's a tough out for a lot of guys. And especially, he'd be a tough out for a lot of prospects, too. If they do keep him, I mean, you can give him the loser of Safdine versus Allenberger. Uh, I don't know if you want to rematch Lawler Shields. Um, maybe you can give out Jake Shields, Matt Brown, or something like that. Actually, Matt Brown's fighting uh, Eric Silva. So the loser of Matt Brown versus Eric Silva, uh, something like that. Lombard, Lombard got a lot of flack from Joe Rogan. I mean, it's like I think he could have finished Jake Shields, or or at least done more to try and finish, but he did like no ground and pound on top at all. He's a bit conservative in uh, like the second and third round with his striking. You know, it's kind of funny that Rogan was giving him such a hard time when down on the ground because he wasn't doing any ground and pound, but it's like, man, one, who goes to the ground with Jake Shields? Two, who's, like, really successfully been able to get good ground and pound off of Jake Shields? I mean, Jake Shields' jiu-jitsu is, like, really good. I, I don't know if he he should really open up with that with it. Um... And then you hear Rogan at the end, like, oh, he got that, that, uh, guillotine choke, it's so deep. And it's like, no, bro, it's not that deep. I, uh, it's one of the things I, I'm not big on Rogan. Uh, you know, if guys, uh, if someone has some sort of submission hold, it, it's always deep, even though it's really not that deep. Um, but, you know, Lombard looked really good, uh. And he fought a guy that makes other... And beat, dominated a guy that makes other fighters not look very good. Um, so there's a case where I'm getting title shot because he also knocked out uh, Nate Marquardt in his last fight. If not, I mean, I, I'm naming like a lot of the same guys. Matt Brown, 
winner of Southend versus Allenberger, Roy McDonald. Just not as ATT compatriots. Um, I think it's kind of a step down if you give him like Dong Young Kim at this point. So there's a lot of good fights for uh, Hector Longboard next. Okay, next fight off that, Ovent St. Pru beat Nikita Krylov by a Von Flu choke. One minute and 29 seconds in the first round. I think it's like, what, the second, only like the second one ever in the UFC or something like that. Um, and, and it goes to show that Krylov more or less is kind of a rookie. It's pretty much a rookie. I mean, it's a pretty rookie mistake to really hold that guillotine when the guy's in side mount for that long period of time. Um, the light heavyweight division though is very thin. I think he should probably give Nikita Krylov another fight. He's one and two in the UFC. You know, just some lower to mid tier guy. LSP, you know, he's kind of a funny guy. Not a funny guy. It's just it, it's always hard to gauge this guy because sometimes he looks like a very green fighter. You know, I mean, it's just. It's always hard to get a beat on the guy. It's it's he's very he's solid, you know. He's on a good win streak right now. He beat like Cody Donovan. He beat um, John Vellante, you know. Got some wins in Strike Force against like what Keith Barry, I think. Um, you know, it's he's a good fighter. He actually goes for things like he'll roll for leg locks. He'll go for a Von Flu choke. You know, he, he goes for stuff that are uh, generally pretty unorthodox. I wish he'd get with a better gym. And so, I think he's with Knoxville MMA. Um, no offense to the gym, but, uh, you know, it's just not one of the big name places. There's no notable fighters coming out of that gym except for uh, OSP. And, um, you know, I wish he'd go to, like, ATT or... Black Zillions or, you know, AKA or Alliance or any one of the better gyms. Um, because when I see him fight, it's always like he's good, but you can always see flaws. And he's been fighting for a while, but he always looks, he always looks like, like he's eternally under the prospect status or something like that. He does need to step up on competition, though, so I think uh, OSP should get the winner of Ryan Jamo versus Sean O'Connell. Or maybe Hafeo Fajal next. Somewhere around like the mid, more like mid, upper, mid tier at this point. Okay, on to the uh, Fox Sports 2 prelims. Kevin, Calvin Gaslin beat Rick Story by a uh, split decision. Good use of the jab from Kelvin Gaslam, you know, his striking's greatly improved, so his combinations well, um, moved well, still had some good wrestling in there, um, good stuff, you know, this guy's really young, um, you know, just kind of gets MMA, throw, you know, strikes well, wrestles well, takes the back well, <laughs> um, I think he's kind of an NX. He's still very a good win here. Really good win. Rick Story is always a good win for anyone. And it kind of goes to show that Rick Story at this point is kind of a gatekeeper at this point, which is fine. You know, he, he is a tough out for a lot of guys. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have to fight for the whole 15 minutes against Rick Story. That's just the way he is. Perfect gatekeeper. You know? I kind of think Gaslam should get more of a lateral move. We always think like, oh, you know, always move up the ladder. But the guy's still at like 22. He doesn't, I don't even know if he has 10 fights yet. Um, I think he should go more laterally, you know. Maybe get the winner of Tiago Perpetuo versus Kenny Robinson. A guy like a Port, uh, Court McGee or Stephen Thompson who's coming out that win over Whitaker. Run again, someone a little higher, maybe the winner of Ryan LaFleur versus John Howard, you know? You don't necessarily need to give him, like, someone great. I think what would help him is just more cage experience. Rick Story, be the gatekeeper, you know? Um, fight the loser of one of those fights or, or something like that. Story versus Whitaker would work. Story versus the loser of LaFleur versus Howard would work, so... 
Story versus the loser, Perpetuo versus Kenny Roberts Robertson works as well. Good stuff from Gaslin though. You know, I am you know, I did pick him to win, but I I, I am on his hype train. I, I I see good stuff from him, to be perfectly honest with you. And as far as that, Jessica Andraj uh, beat Raquel Pennington by a split decision. Fun fight, you know. I mean, Raquel Pennington still has a problem with really pulling the trigger. She's technically superior to Andrade, um, but she needs to be able to use what she has consistently. You know, it's like when she throws straights and combinations and gets out of the way. She, you know, it's all good. You know, she's getting the better of the exchanges, not getting hit back herself. When she gets into the brawls with Andros and gets overwhelmed, and that's the thing with Pennington, I even saw in like Invicta and her losses against, uh, like, Leslie Smith, a really good example. So Leslie Smith go, goes forward. It's just that um, she she does have a tendency to get overwhelmed. Uh, Kent Zingano kind of overwhelmed her with clinch work and wrestling. Um, but you know, Raquel's still pretty young, good boxing, moves well, just needs to be able to do that for, like, most of the fights. She needs to pull the trigger a lot more. Decent takedown defense, uh, as well. But, uh, Jessica Andrade, you know, Pile Drivers is her nickname. You know, um, really good judo throws on Pennington. She's a brawler, I mean. But... You know, she's like one of the shortest fighters of the division. I mean, you know, someone like that probably isn't going to be able to utilize a great jab or, or straight punch against these opponents that are just much taller, much longer than her. So it makes sense to make up for that deficit by pushing forward a lot and, you know, throwing like more haymakers and stuff like that. Um... You know, she's really fun to watch, though. I mean, she, she throws, she brawls, you know. I think uh, Andraj should get the winner of Batch Coria versus Jasmine Duke next. And Pennington should get the loser of that bout. Um, next try that, Dennis Bermudez beat Jimmy Hettis by TKO. It was a knee uh, in the third round. Utter domination by Dennis Bermudez, man. This guy is so strong. He's a good wrestler. He still is defensively unsound. He can't really keep opponents down on the mat. Uh, it's something really noticeable with him. Um, but, yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing with Bermudez, you know. He, he's quietly picking up a win streak. And he should definitely move up. Uh, he should probably get a guy like a Nick Lentz or a uh, Cub Swanson or Jeremy Stevens next. Um, you know, he's looking a lot better, though. Uh, still had those defensive flaws, but, um, you know, uh, nonetheless, he, he's just... Really fun fire, and always pushing forward. With Hedis, I, I think the, I don't know the prospect label with him. I, I don't know how far he gets anymore. His striking defense still needs some work. He's got some good judo, got a good ground game. His striking still needs work as well. Um, he's not the most athletic guy. Um, just more lower to mid tier guys of the division for him. Okay, next fight that Alex Garcia beat uh, Sean Spencer by a uh, split decision. A uh, really fun fight, man. And, um, you know, Spencer had the more technical boxing. Garcia had, definitely had the more power. Um, wasn't always the most technical. He'd throw looping punches a lot of times. He is huge for the weight class. Um, his gas, his cardio didn't look that great. But he can always rely on his wrestling uh, it, uh, when he needed to. He took Spencer down almost at will. But Spencer, man, that guy is really good at getting his, back to his feet when he's taken down. Um, real back and forth stuff, too. I mean, he, he, he wobbled Garcia. Um, so it, it is really good stuff here. 
a really fun fight. Didn't actually expect this fight to be uh, so back and forth. Uh, Spencer's still a really good prospect, you know, solid boxer. He's adding kicks to his game, solid takedown defense. I mean, he's taking down a lot, but like, I think it's counter wrestling in the sense that he's get, getting back to his feet when he's taking down. Garcia, though, definitely a prospect to look out for. It's more lower to major guys in the division for them. Next fight is that Frank Trevino beat Hene Forks by unanimous decision. Trevino was using like superior Muay Thai to win this fight. He had a kind of tough first round though. I think got his back taken. Um, Forge is always that guy that's like solid but not spectacular. I don't really know much about Trevino. I mean, as far as how far he's gonna get up there, uh, you know, just there's not much I can say about this fight. It's not a stout, you know, it's not one that particularly stood out or anything. It's more lower to major guys at the division for both these guys. You might. I think Forge doesn't really have a role in the UFC though. I'm always big on that whole like a guy should have a role in the UFC and Henry Forge just doesn't he's not really a gatekeeper, he's not a prospect per se. You know. Um you know, honestly it wouldn't be surprised if he gets cut, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Next fight after that, Justin Scott against beat Will Camposano by unanimous decision. Man, I thought that, that Cambozano would be like a really good test for Scoggins because Cambozano was doing really well against Pettis despite losing. Domination, man, by Scoggins here. I mean, just outstruck him, took him down at will, beat him up on top control. I mean, just mixed his striking up with his rushing. This guy, Scoggins, he's only like 21 years old. Awesome stuff, man. This guy, this kid, prospect to look out for. I mean, just he's got it all. I mean, he he's just got it all, man. Um, he needs he needs a big step up too. Maybe to what Brad Pickett, who's coming out that one over Neil Siri. Maybe even an Ian McCall. Other guys are up there. I mean, if you want to use Scoggins, Dodson, Scoggins, Mikovsky, um, Scoggins, Baga Utinov. You can. That's pretty high up there. But, you know, definitely needs to step up. This kid has top 10 skill set um, already. Uh, he is really good. Speaking of a really good prospect here, Sean Strickland beat Robert Bubba McDaniel by Rene Stroke in the first round. This guy, man, he's wrestling. I've heard about this guy's ground and pound. But, you know, you saw it here. <laughs> And then he takes it back, and in transition gets a rear naked choke. Striking didn't look too bad either, you know? Took the final really short notice, and just made it look like Bubba McDaniel didn't belong to cage with him. I mean, gonna look out for this guy. Middleweight, you know, I, I say this about middleweight, I like the division, but they don't have a lot of blue chip prospects. They have good prospects, they have like Brad Tavares, Lorenz Larkin. Caesar Mutanch, but they don't have these like really blue chip guys. Sean Strickland, he's like 23, looks pretty good. He could be a blue chip prospect for sure. Uh, and, and a division that does have prospects, I mean, you got Uriah Hall, you got um, Josh the Man, a lot, you know, good prospects, but you don't have like blue chip ones. Maybe Strickland will be a blue chip prospect. He looks really good. For sure. Started really young in MMA as well. Uh, and finally, Rob White, Robert Whiteford beat Daniel Pineda by unanimous decision. Uh, you know, Robert Whiteford was able to get the takedowns on Pineda. Pineda was going for like leg locks and stuff. He's fighting until the end. I think he's on an extended losing streak now, but um, hopefully they keep him. He's a fun action fighter. Good gatekeeper. Whiteford, there's more lower to mid-tier guys in the division for him. So that's it for my post fight analysis for UFC 171. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.